if we go to the X Force Exchange and look for IoT Reaper, to try to understand how to identify this malware, and we click on the first entry. We can see here that there are some IOC, some indicators of compromise, some uh, MD5 hashes, as well as a couple of uh, host names. So pay attention to this host name because we're going to be using uh, those uh, to look for it. But there's one thing that I want to uh, discuss first. When this Reaper malware, which uh, infects uh, some models of D-Links and, uh, and other routers. Uh, when it looks to for the uh, IP address to phone home, in this particular case, this is one of the indicators of compromise we just found on the X-Force Exchange site. Then it needs to talk to a DNS resolver like Google's 8.8.8 and get the IP so he can actually phone home and communicate. We made a previous video on Quad9, the, the DNS resolver, and I'm going to put the link to it in the video description in here. And we will show in this particular exercise that when the same malware tries to phone home and ask for a IP address for that and other uh, indicators of compromise, he's going to get nothing back. So this is a way of protecting you. It's not the only protection at all, but it's a good uh, protection uh, and also a good way of uh, detecting that this malware is attacking your environment. How are we going to be showing all this here? We're going to show q and I in action, it's a curator component. What this excellent technology does, it actually ingests from a span port or mirror port, uh, call it a gigamon tap. Basically, it ingests all the traffic, the network traffic, and it, does, it doesn't do a, a, a full packet capture and storage that is actually pretty expensive, applicable, and Curator has a QIF module for doing that, but QNI is much nimble. What it does is that it's going to inspect the entire payload, and it's going to look for things like file hashes, DNS request and response, and that's how we're going to be validating that uh, one DNS resolver gives it an address and the other one doesn't. Also looks at things like file name and file size. For example, on emails, you're going to look for the subject line and what it has. And like that, there are very many other fields, and I'm going to be showing you all those. And we're going to, it takes all that information and sends it to Curator as flows. So you can have offenses and searches and all the rest of the logic that Curator has applicable to it. Actually, we're going to be seeing how offenses are going to be fired when we're actually going to be launching, uh, detonating the malware, the, 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 the Reaper malware that uh, our friend Polo actually uh, recreated. And we are going to be replaying the attack. Uh, Q&I will inspect all that information and send all those fields into QRadar. And we're going to be proving that Quad9 gives you some level of protection that Google's 8.8.8 doesn't give you, and how you can actually detect the presence of malware using QNI. So let's switch to the QRadar. Here on the network activity, we see all that traffic 
going, be, being analyzed, and the flows being sent the, the, from the traffic. The flows are sent. We actually see some offenses firing, as you can see here. And, and then all that nice information is actually extracted and sent. And for example, we can look at file hashes and notice the filter is actually file Q and I uh, is not an A. Actually, let's uh, look at that in the last. Uh, and here we have a couple of instances of file hashes. We can actually click on any one of these, and here we have the SHH 256 uh, hash and a few other fields. We can actually perform other searches. Let me actually go ahead and add a filter here. And notice that we have some of those fields that I mentioned that are extracted from the real traffic and are available. All these things that go with Q and I between parentheses are things that we can actually extract. So, so I have a safe search here that I created before. this one. Let me go back in time a couple of minutes ago, let's say 15 minutes ago. And we have here the DNS response that contains any of the, and these are some of the indicators of compromise that we showed before. And what is very interesting from this search to see is that notice that when the DNS resolver that the malware used to look for the information, because this was the was that was configured in in, in the in, in the routers, uh, when when it was a dot a dot a, notice that the request from a particular host like a e dot h l a fifty two dot com provides a response on the actual address. Notice that the address is 27, 102, 101, 121. But when the resolver is quad 9, we can see here with QNI that it did not return anything. That's actually pretty good. Let's go actually go into the offenses and see. I, I started with a clean offenses and notice that we get an offense firing And if we take a look at the details of that offense, we see that, you know, 29,000 events and quite a few flows. Let me actually display the rules that make this offense. Notice that we see that, you know, LDAP server scanner, possible word detection. We got actually a match with the X4 uh, feed that we actually uh, get. And we see also indication of an exploit taking place. All these things have been chained, combined into a single offense. So instead of showing me gazillions of events and flows, I get a single offense with a clear indication that something bad actually happened on my network. I could actually, with the hashes, we could even send these to Watson and get, you know, uh, confirmation that this is Reaper. I mean, many things that you can actually do with this QNI technology, which again has the capability of taking all the network traffic, extracting a couple of fields in a very nimble way, and allows you all these nice rules in Curator uh, to, to fire. I must say that none of these rules I created, these are standard rules that come either from the basic curator or all from the packages that uh, the applications that we added. Uh, let me just show you some of the ones uh, that I actually added in my new uh, 731, you know, just to give you an idea, this particular, the RFI FSI is actually a very, uh, very uh, good one. And just to show you, again, another example of, of these capabilities, we can look for another indicator of compromise, which is the presence of a particular CGI file. So I'm going to scroll down here 
and go into Q&I uh, file name and I'm going to put just contains any of and the name of that file is uh, hedwig.cgi and if I add that in here and add that filter let me go back in time at the time of the attack and see well actually I selected the wrong property here to look for it let me actually repeat that well I can do it from here or I can actually just add a filter is quicker this way uh, the property, the parameter that I need to look for is on the one of the Q&I ones. Let me actually get the right. This is file name Q&I contains any of I'm going to put that H E D W I G dot C G I add that filter and go back in time let me go 30 minutes in time we actually see that that indicator of compromise that file has been detected and actually multiple times it's actually going to any one of these uh, entries and we see that uh, one of the properties that Q and I extracted, we see the hash, request URL, all those stuff that we showed you before, but here is the actual file name that we were looking. Very capable and nimble without having to go into the expense of full packet capture, but you do not lose visibility on the content of the payload happening on your network.